nave kun cibai. Tunin hun hoi tak patihani non pia a pune komang nai sialin vision ana nai ina alom te akai kom a delhi lama pata ama vision hi tunia hong tang tung hin katheya hi cibang intellectual forum hong om mi hiai zain hong uap te hi achievement tu pi takahia delhi kong a ama le official serving hi in non serving hi le Bang saya min gen gen seku en le social media le mu ke bang lezo hontial kau ya ahi ziakin anak ifel zo lo ziakin anak is support kange ke ya ahi ziakin a progress subang anak is simzel dokumen hoi pp bolu tu apu ne sial ma in leng artikel hoi tak tak agel a a vision ha i a artikel gel zanin ucin su ma patin kala a tu pima ma ahi ama ha azi Ministry of External Affairs asep ziaki na kon gen sak mai dia. Kove la gam chang kang thay tok tam tak muta ahi amau ka quarter bang na yun chin hu cha ka vazin zelun Paris, Europa gam tupi teng chini America si teng hong vamu un chin waya kopi city ichi u eloin munir ka Delhi ichi te city ina chi te dan ka anahilo lua na yun chin ama ka va Piang tak cini, hoci dan hongom kahidin keging taa tunna, ame kuang apa itu zela vision, eibang lehon pe katahi, wajakin kapur loa kipatu kegenahi lehon cial zakun, so mite yang le sapau non gen zakuna kian lekon gen mai dia nam, apa itu pau teh lau le yom tuan holke nadiwa, so good afternoon everyone. I am V L Robi Kulai. My husband's surname is Guite, so you can call me V L Robi Kulai Guite also. And I'm very happy that my brother-in-law senior is also there. That's why I'm mentioning the Guite part very clearly. Further, I would like to say that I have I am not actually born here, but I have spent majority of my life in Churachandpur, which we fondly call Lamka. It's a very sentimental issue with us, so <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, so I have studied till class 10 here in Don Bosco High School, and that was a very wonderful phase of life. So uh, early 80s and late 80s and early 90s, those were the flowering period of our Churachanpur town. And the schools, everyone, uh, I, I would say that uh, most of the population in Churachanpur town at that time are, uh, you know, first or second generation people who are getting a proper classical education. Because uh, our, our whole uh, southern Churachanpur region, we have come into the light of the gospel only since 1900s, only 100 years since then. And even then, very few people could get a proper education. They had to come from very remote areas to study in the Tamenglong government higher secondary school, or they had to be rich enough to be the chief son or daughter uh, to you know, study in the big cities. So that was a very sad situation. But now that uh, in the 80s and 90s, so many good schools came up, including this uh, present college, and this is uh, a product, uh, the, the result of those years, those 20, 30 years, that so many of us are able to converse in English so fluently and discuss such an intellectual topic such as climate change and think of a very good future for our very own Lamka city. So thank you everyone for listening very patiently to me. And uh, Further, I would just like to explain how I am associated with this program today. Uh, Dr. Joshi is my head of department. Right now, I am serving in Imphal San Jentong Forest Department Office. So what happened is, one day he called me and said, uh, you know, one organization, Vision Lamka, the chairman came with Dr. Uh, Baite. Baite sir had retired by then. Of course, young retiree, very young. So he went and met our uh, Dr. Joshi, and they invited him for this program. And he was highly convinced. He was very happy. And he told me, I would like to give them some uh, support, financial. So since you're looking after State Forest Development Agency, you may be having some office expenses, which you have been saving for your you know, petrol or something like that. So we happily earmarked uh, some amount for that. 
and I'm happy to say that we have uh, already claimed that we are collaborating with them. It has come up in the banners also. We don't leave a chance to be left out in these kind of things. And I'll be uh, asking my, uh, you know, range officer, one uh, very bright young lady, Miss Kimboi Hangshing, to hand it over after the function. So what happened, so that was the genesis of how we came to be associated with this. And since the secretary, Mr. Shum himself, is a very close friend, we started talking and we started designing how we would go about this, how we would go through the logistics and all this. And uh, though he has been very active, I could not give him 100% support. Uh, however, uh, it has come to this uh, situation today and I'm very proud and privileged to be presenting uh, some insight into this topic which has been allotted to me. And in the meantime, I would also like to mention that uh, some people here have been um, very instrumental in my education. For example, our chairman, Pune Sial, and uh, Sir Lalpi. Uh, the, so, Pune Sial, when he was a very young man, and a very handsome young man, I would say, before Madam Grace uh, caught hold of him, he was our grammar teacher. I would say history also. So he was very, uh, as a teacher, out of all the teachers, he was highly disciplined. Uh, very good in teaching, very patient, and we respected him a lot, and I I'm very grateful to him for being, uh, you know, teaching us in those days. And Sir Lalpi, though he has not exactly taught our classes, he was a very model teacher. He was not only academically useful for the school of Don Bosco, but he was always the, uh, you know, most dynamic, leading the students in extracurricular activities. Every sports event he had to lead, and every march pass, everything. So he, I would say he's a person who is very inspiring, who if you ask to take one step, will take three steps forward for anybody he's working for or any friend he has. And I'm very happy that I am able to stand in front of them and, you know, speak. So, and so, and other uh, community leaders are also here, those people whom since my childhood I have looked up to, those who have led us in Siamsin Polpi, and very, very respectable, dignified, you know, uh, retired officials whom from our childhood have been our uh, role models. For example, Indian Foreign Service officer, retired Pu Elti Ngaite. He is uh, one of the persons who inspired me to uh, write for civil services and I got IFS, but not the foreign one. So I got the forest. Still, I'm happy, and I'm glad to see that he's very healthy and uh, still so productive, writing uh, articles, books, and so on so many and very eclectic subjects, I would say. And I would like to say that he has done the country proud also, not only Churachanpur Lamka. So with so much of introduction, I would like to begin my uh, small talk. I. I'm not an expert on this. The topic has been given to me, but I'm very happy because if it was very hardcore forestry, I may not be able to do justice to it. So I am also collecting information from here and there, especially from the earlier writings of Vision Lamka chairman. And I could see that our chairman really does have very innovative ideas. And those are which may not be uh, actually applicable now, but some of the ideas are very good, you know, like having a construction company and uh, people pooling their money together to redesign their own habitats, making the roads better or uh, reinstalling some kind of public place. A lot of good things are there, which I'm not able to tell everyone right now. And one of the things which I don't know whether we may like or not was uh, imposing a tax on our houses. There are quite a few wealthy people here in our town, and they have huge houses, good, good houses, of course, which they have built with their own labor. But if these are taxed and they go back to the community, uh, we do not know which exactly, which institution should be take, taking that tax, but that was also one very good suggestion. And that would be used for maintenance of any uh, public amenity, public goods, not any individual goods. It may be sewerage, it may be drain, it may be uh, some beautification, something like that. So those are very innovative ideas which I read in his paper and I will not be repeating them. Uh, so first of all, I would like to just uh, present one slide which says what is sustainable. Next. Uh, so sustainable, this is an English word which says, uh, I, as far as I understand, it may mean ability to be maintained at an unceasing state. That is, it is not exhausted. 
So it is sustained and in the context of natural resources, we say in the context of our natural resources, air, water, land, that it should be sustainable means in our generation, we should not make such rampant exploitation of these resources that for our children, grandchildren, for the future, that nothing is left. So that is what is uh, I, what I understand by natural resources. And as far as sustainable city, which is mentioned in our topic, I would say that a city designed with consideration for social, economic, environmental impacts, and as a resilient habitat for existing populations, which may mean us if we apply to ourselves uh, right now, without compromising the ability of future generations to experience the same. So this is a very good uh, I, uh, definition. There are so many definitions of sustainable cities, so I thought this is a simple explanation which gives everything. And social means uh, uh, within the community, leading to human interactions, economic, about the uh, trade and business of the city and the environmental impact. So since I'm from the uh, natural resource management sector, I would like to focus more on this environmental impacts part. So one example of, uh, uh, you know, one natural resource, or I would say natural wealth, which has been depleted uh, in our district is very simply, uh, one good example is uh, rhinoceros. So it is written in literature that rhinoceros used to roam the Kuga Valley. Now rhinoceros, if we have to see, we have to go to the zoo in Guwahati, the nearest, because in Manipur we don't have rhinoceros, or we have to go to Kaziranga National Park. So it has become thousands of kilometers far away from where we can see this very, very uh, rare animal. That is one natural resource which has been exhausted. Another is uh, in from this district, maybe the Sangai deer. There's a village called Sangai Kot, which I suspect uh, Baitesar will know. So definitely the name may have been given because Sangais were found there. But as we know, uh, when human beings settle into new areas, we disturb their habitat, their living place becomes uh, you know, uncomfortable. They do not like uh, noise, they do not like their foods to be disturbed and most probably some hunting may have taken place. So that is also one example of uh, wildlife which we have lost due to uh, our human activities. And since today we are concentrating a lot on our city, Lamka, I would like to, and sustainable city, I would like just to show a slide where we see what is a sustainable city, key features of a sustainable city. Next. Okay, okay. So this is for our own education. I have also been educated while preparing for this small talk. So in an ideal sustainable city, a city which does not use up its resources indiscriminately with consideration for the future. So this is what some, uh, you know, uh, people, scientists have thought or decided that these are the things which should be there in a sustainable city. The resources and services in the city are accessible to all. There should not be exclusivity or you know, system where you are uh, having bias towards some sections of the city. Then public transport is safe, reliable and viable alternative to your own cars. You should be having a good metro or tram or where you are uh, sharing the public transport because vehicles are the highest, uh, you know, the um, greatest culprit in air pollution. So this is a very important point. Then, especially for us, this is important. Walking and cycling is safe. In Charachanpur town, there are very few main arterial roads where walking and cycling is safe. As we all know, it is chaotic right now. Double parking is going on, roads are narrow. And areas of open space are safe, accessible, and enjoyable. We have very few common open spaces, no, no such official park now. Then wherever possible, renewable resources are used instead of non-renewable resources. So this is also one point. Then water is recycled wherever possible. This I doubt we are doing. New homes are energy efficient. Then there is access to affordable housing. There is no such uh, well uh, good system right now. Community links are strong and communities work together to deal with issues such as crime and security. Here, I think we people in Lamka town have some uh, 
you know, some points to score. We do have good community institutions like your YPA, YVA, YMA. We are still very well connected communi uh, community level and it, this, we already have this criteria so we are well on our way to becoming a sustainable city. Then cultural and social amenities are accessible to all. So this is also one point. Here, I, here also we do not score too badly because we have our community halls, we have uh, stadiums which are uh, somewhere, I think Tuibong also we have a good one. Then here we have PT sports complex which are accessible to all. So we are on the way. So today we are all Lamka lovers and I just thought I'll present this slide. Lamka is an urban area, definitely. Uh, and it is a town, we have been calling it a town for a quite a long time. As per the census 2011 uh, definitions, it best fits the category of census town. We have a, pop uh, where a census town is supposed to have population more than 5,000, 75% of its male populations are engaged in non-agricultural pursuits, which I think is true. And perhaps it's faced the density criteria. We have only about uh, 59 or 60 people per square kilometers. In the whole district, there is no such data which I found suddenly for uh, the town area, but it will not differ so much. Of course, it will be definitely more in these uh, market areas. And so what we know now is where we are. Lamka is not yet a city. But we are on the way to becoming one. Why? Because what is a city? A city is an urban agglomerate. Uh, it is a collection of small, small towns and villages, which during the course of time, when people develop and roads become good and trade and commerce become so good, that it is all merged and becomes well connected, then the city is uh, born. It comes from them. So even our Delhi is also an urban agglomerate, which we are very familiar with, Mumbai, Delhi, etc., etc. So I am sure that one day in the not very far future, we will be a very big city. And Vision Lamka is playing a big role in uh, igniting our minds to take very concrete actions towards having a very good city. And we are just in time. Because uh, Lamka, right now, we are having a strong uh, we are in a very good position in terms of uh, air quality. You have water quality and you have uh, good uh, scenic, uh, you know, hill, hills are there and you still have some vegetation, though these are highly degraded. So uh, water quality is good, air quality is good, and uh, our uh, nearby villages in the hills are still small. They are not overpopulated. So these are the plus points. Now, if you if we say Lamka is a, to be a sustainable, healthy city, I do not know by, uh, I, am, I cannot predict, but I think minimum by 30, within 30 years, we'll surely come to that stage. And as also mentioned by other speakers, by 2050, 65% of world's population is expected to be in cities. So definitely, we Chirochandpur, Lamka people are going to be in that 65% category. Now, we have some very local issues, which uh, many people also know, uh, and I feel very senior to those young kids there, but I, I, from my uh, experience growing up in this town, I would say that our, some of our serious uh, issues are administrative, though I have not put the word political, it is also political. We are administrated in a hybrid manner. If I'm wrong, kindly forgive me, uh, in a hybrid manner, and this town was a municipality in the 80s, which was removed uh, in 1988, sometime there. And I would say the reason was that uh, we have a mindset of uh, really running after rural development schemes and handouts from the government, because uh, government has a uh, very good tribal uh, population-oriented schemes, which are targeted to villages, not towns. So we wanted to be villages. For example, right now, we have only three census towns, Zenhang Lamka, Hill Town, and uh, Renkai. And these have very small populations, 3,000 people, 5,000 people. These are not Pakka towns, census towns only, without any extra infrastructure or service which are supposed to be in a town. I don't know why they 
chose to remain a town in those days, but other areas we all chose to become villages. I stay in Elimbeng, it is a village, it has a village authority. Even uh, Biveng Nom, it has a village, it is a village authority, Bijang. Everywhere we are a conglomeration of village authorities. And there are many uh, advantages to that because it becomes a local self-government. Civil supplies like uh, free rice for COVID, uh, uh, due to COVID, all these are distributed easily. It is deputed to the village authorities and there are uh, very efficient people running the village authorities. Certainly it has its advantages and MNREGS, all of us avail of that. In some places even employed people register for this, which is a very shameful thing. Even retired uh, officials, I have met, uh, noticed they have availed of MNREGS. Very sad, very sad. Not us, nobody in this room has done so. So they are somewhere there, Bungwal side. Mm. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I will disclose only to some people. Mm. Now, what I want to say is, uh, we want very good roads. In a sustainable city, we want good roads where we can have a cycle lane, we can have a walking lane, there will be a proper parking space, and there will be no double parking, uh, like that, like that, uh, you know? Uh, but suppose there is an expansion plan for Tidim Road. When they propose, government proposes expansion plan, if they want to take the land this side, uh, east or west, they would have to <clears throat> speak to the owners of those houses and they would calculate the compensation rate per square feet, this, 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 this. In revenue areas, in Imphal, when they expand Tidim Road, they will go by a separate rate. Now here, they will go by a separate, another different rate. In Imphal and all, it is quite good. I do not know the exact rate. But here, I am sure it is not profitable for the owners of the buildings because these are unsurveyed areas, hill lands. You are in a village authority. Nobody wants to give their land. The compensation rate is too low. So that is one uh, problem which I think might have happened. That is why we are still congested. Another maybe, um, another issue is when we want to be village here, uh, some people have a tendency to go deep into the interior, real villages, unsurveyed, hill lands and purchase lands. Okay, you get, take the land, have an understanding with the village authority, no problem, and cultivate, make a farm, and take it on lease or something, it's okay. But some people uh, feel that I want to be very sure that this is my land, and they will, you know, by some means, they may make Dak uh, Chitha or Pakapata. So that is also possible and it might have happened also, which is very alarming because whenever our Honorable CM speaks sometimes uh, to in the other hill districts, he says, if Churachampur can give Pakapata, why not in Ukrul? Why not in that? So that is one mistake which we are doing and it is because of selfishness. If you take it from your brother, tribesman, and you have an understanding, have faith in him, don't try to make it legalize in the DC office. And we are giving our hill house tax, that is good, because all of us are Indian citizens, and arguably, we cannot run away now, and that is enough. Beyond that, let us not compromise our own position. We have to be aware of the legal implications like uh, all this taking pakapata in unnecessary places. We can just have faith and do our own thing and uh, you know, uh, uh, manage our lands with faith and love. Then you will have social fencing. You will not need paka fencing. We have to maintain that. And uh, regarding these administrative things, I will speak up to this. I may go too far otherwise. And regarding amenities and uh, services, right now, all of us may be not very satisfied. Electricity is good. We have prepaid. And that is one of the greatest boons which I have seen because many young people who have migrated back from the cities because of COVID have been able to actively work for their international companies, setting up their own systems with uh, taking up a, you know, uh, having a commercial connection with electricity. And they are actually earning money 
which they are not wasting on rent and taxes. So this is one very good development we have had because of the uh, supply of this electricity through prepaid metering, which is very fair and just for everyone. Only uh, issue is we would like to have better quality transformers, we'd like to have better quality trans, uh, transmission lines. When the transmission lines are uh, outdated and weak and you know very thin, then it cannot uh, uh, support the load which is required by such a uh, developing town. All of us uh, have some kind of uh, electrical equipment, all household gadgets, plus these professionals who are actually working 24 hours a day with the help of electricity. So we need this very good quality uh, power uh, infrastructure and equipment. Then our water supply. This is better said than, you know, uh, not said, I don't know, but, but I don't think anybody is satisfied with this. We have been living in the hope when the Kuga uh, Dam is uh, through, we will be given piped water to our house. In my childhood, there was no piped water to the house. Now also there is no piped water, but we had to collect water from the roadside in the uh, distribution pipes are there near the Nalas, which had to be collected by households who will come out. At least now we have pipes up to, you know, the plastic pipes taken from the feeder to our homes. But we are still not able to actually use them uh, in, through this uh, faucet system and all. Plus, the supply is very irregular. Uh, I don't know how they manage the main person who goes and opens the uh, water supply system. But sometimes the water continuously flows for one week. If you have only one 1,000 liter syntax, what is the use of that? And then that fellow will not open it for another three weeks. So in one go, he will finish his duty of one month in one go. That kind of thing is also happening. So that is very sad. I think this is a lack of supervision by the senior officers and, and the person who is actually going in opening also has to be you know, sensitized properly. So that is also a very simple uh, solution must be there for that and it is our responsibility only. And uh, regarding this uh, drainage and sewerage, this is definitely required because the ones we have are quite old and primitive now. Most of our sewerage must be go, uh, flowing down to Tuita River, which in our childhood we could go and take bath, but now I do not want to go there. I'm sure because as our population has grown and our, we have started using so many, uh, you know, hi-fi, uh, things for our cleanliness, uh, including uh, harpy, deodorants, diapers, sanitary napkins. We do not dispose them properly. Some people throw them into the Dalas. So Tuita River must be collecting lots of these bi non-biodegradable plastics in one corner and it is going to be a problem later on. It will lead to disease and these and blockage, etc. And uh, Unplanned growth. This has been addressed very well in our VL, uh, you know, Vision Lamka documents. So we need to plan our growth in new areas. We are growing very fast towards Imphal. We are very growing very fast towards Saikot also. And we have uh, some really enterprising people who uh, kind of buy the paddy lands which the people don't want to cultivate anymore and give. So they are doing it in a very professional manner, and I appreciate that they are keeping uh, provisions for uh, streets also. So in future, we hope that it will be done even better. And now that people have started getting compensation for uh, NHIDCL projects here and there, uh, people from our villages also would like to have a plot in the towns. So these people have to be given land in such a manner that for them also it is slightly systematic and they can avail basic amenities like electricity and roads properly. Not that they have to, again, later on, uh, sell part of their land for only road or, uh, you know, be without any water supply. And um, importantly, from the forestry sector, I would say that for any sustainable city, and especially Lamka town, the sustainability of Lamka town will depend on these hill, hillocks which are surrounding our town. And these hillocks are occupied may not be as thickly as in the town, but the people are there. There are so many villages. So these people, they are, uh, 
those who actually settle there, they have their livelihoods based on the forest. Firewood, charcoal, timber, some for poppy plantations, then hunting, fishing, and zoom fields, etc., etc. So our people need to be made aware of how to go about these livelihood activities in a better way, in a more sustainable way. We cannot tell them to immediately stop. It will be highly unfair because we have come to that stage where we don't need to go to the forest to get our daily bread. But these people still need it and we cannot tell them to stop it. But they have to be told how to do it in a sustainable way. For example, from a lot of discussions which I have had with senior officers in my department and outside, what I have learned is regarding our Zoom cultivation, it can be done more sustainably in the sense that uh, when you uh, clear a patch of land, uh, sometimes out of enjoyment of fire, you know, some, uh, not women, men, they like to see fire burning. So <laughs> they will clearly burn everything. There's no need for that. Plus, they should, if there is a very good plus tree species in your Zoom selected area, whether it is tolhau, whether it is uh, fruit tree, some very good species, it should be left standing so that that tree will give the seed. And when you leave that area, when you do not cultivate it anymore, it will naturally regenerate. We need those kind of plus trees to be preserved. This is a very simple thing which we may try to, you know, uh, propagate among our people who are still taking up cultivation of uh, zoom, zoom fields. So, and in our forestry works also, we are always making nurseries of uh, good, the best timber species for which we always need seeds from good source. Sometimes when we ask from other states, suppose you ask bamboo seeds from Karnataka, they say this is the best bamboo, tall, straight, strong. We used to buy it, definitely. I also bought once and what happened is it grew up like thorns. There is no certification. It was useless, so it, there was, there's a huge clump of thorn bamboo somewhere near the FO South uh, office, but, but I think it has been taken. So that kind of thing is highly un, uh, you know, uh, unwanted, and if the jhum, jhumyas, if our farmers can leave these kind of trees and supply us the seed, we will happily buy it. That is what I would suggest to our DFO also, and she also nodding her head, she will buy all the seeds, yes. <laughs> And what, uh, one more thing which I'd like to say is um, this, uh, this morning I received, uh, I saw one message in one group that uh, instead of going for very high studies, these days our youngsters can go for entrepreneurship before going to university or go for technical studies and or MBAs and have business and et cetera, et cetera. So there was a very good discussion that this is a good livelihood, this, uh, that one, this business is good. And someone suggested the best business which we have now, apart from going to More, taking the goods, 20% uh, you know, increase and selling it, apart from trading, retailing like that, the best is take earth, take sand, stone from the district professionally with lots of uh, investment, uh, vehicle, manpower, and sell it to Imphal site that will be the most profitable. So I was horrified and I, I would say that people are already doing it. They are doing it in the village lands with the understanding of the chief. Definitely, it has been going on for a long time. There are quarries also. And the, as far as I know, I don't think we are supplying to outside the district too much. That is a good thing. But once we start supplying to other districts, then so many entrepreneurs of this nature will start that we will never be able to uh, you know regenerate those areas again in the next 20 30 years and that will be disaster there will be no sustainable city lamka it will be gone and right now what we are doing is we all have our own construction works going on we, everyone's improving their house or building a new house that's okay domestic supply we can buy and this and that but actually encouraging youngsters to go into this business that I, I don't agree right now because as a citizen of a, a sovereign country, we do have our acts and rules which applies to every corner of the country and whatever quarries we are 
uh, doing. We are quarrying uh, for stones, uh, very good stones. Uh, this is going on and we are buying also. But what I can tell you is in other parts of uh, Manipur, for example in Imphal, we are actually taking forest clearance for quarries. Uh, suppose you want to have a quarry in a village uh, for five hectares, then you have to apply to the forest department and you have to be ready to say that I, I want to use this as a quarry, the chief also doesn't have any problem, but I will be paying the money for compensatory afforestation. Twice this area will be afforested, afforested by the forest department and I am going to pay the net present value of whatever life forms I have destroyed in that area. It can be plants, animals, so there is a calculation, there is a formula which has been finalized by the Supreme Court. So those kind of calculations will come into it, so maybe 10 lakhs, so that kind of clearance has to be taken. So here we are not bothering much, uh, that's okay, so uh, we will not go too deep into that also. But in future, I would say that we should not go for reckless quarrying or reckless collection of sand and stone from our rivers because it will kill them. And in our generation itself, we may not be able to benefit from this, uh, forget about our children and uh, grandchildren. So this is what I really want to say here, that uh, we, we should have a word of caution. And in our uh, beloved town, there are, um, there's one river here, Lanwa River, Tuita River, in and around Tuita River, I don't think people build very, uh, houses very close, but Lanwa River is totally encroached, which is very sad, and if anyone can make correction, that would be very good. People are building houses right over the river also, and uh, 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 even very prominent citizens have houses very close to the rivers, which is very sad because all their garbage is thrown to that, and they themselves are at a risk. Suppose there's a flash flood in Taising Hills, then suddenly huge, uh, this one will come and animals, children, anyone can be uh, thrown away, flown away, and it will be, uh, you know, too late by the time. So we should have some restriction on the use of our river banks, at least 500 meters. It doesn't need for the government to come and say don't do it or the police to come. We should have the common sense that rivers are our lifelines. We should not build our houses or concrete structures too close because this is uh, giving us our drinking water, this is cleaning our town, this is carrying away our pollutions, toxins, whatever we are throwing into the ground. So right now what I would like again to say is since we are a conglomeration of village authorities, we do not have a municipality uh, and government of India has very good schemes under um, Ministry of Urban Development for smart cities or even for sewage system, solid waste treatment plants, uh, liquid treatment plants, it has everything, uh, Ministry of Urban and Housing Affairs. Only thing is, these schemes are applicable in municipalities or municipal corporations like Imphal, where the population is higher. So even if we apply for it, they will disqualify us on this criteria. You are not a municipality. That is one sad part. And we have to find funds from either other ministries, development schemes, which are untied or unspecified uh, uh, items of works are there. So we would have to scrounge in different ministries. So instead of that, if it was, at, especially the town area, if it was a municipality, it would be easy to get funds for this, uh, you know, uh, heavy input, uh, high funding, uh, very expensive projects. And as uh, Baite sir, my senior has said, uh, Imphal is a has a municipal corporation, so uh, before I joined, uh, there was a proposal submitted to Ministry of Environment for Nagarvan, that is a city forest. And it has been approved just now, and it will be taken up in Hebokchin, which is near Manipur University. So it will be a very, very good uh, uh, city forest, which will really help in cleaning the air of Imphal city provide recreational uh, outlet to the citizens also, and it will provide employment to the locals also, because you're going to need a watchman or, you know, Mali, whatever. So this is a very good project which we have just now, process is underway to initiate the works. And these kind of things will be available to us if we had been municipality. 
And uh, like I said, road widening I've already discussed. Then our ADG, ADCs are at least having a garbage collection vehicles, which I make full use of. They come once in a week. Uh, but it would be very nice if they can come twice in a week and they can have better vehicles or more vehicles and more uh, people uh, to be involved. And I don't know whether we have sweepers or not for the roadsides. I have never seen. So it would be nice if we can have this. And the garbage disposal site at Sekin, I think we need to install some kind of uh, equipment there which will compress and make it into something usable or it can be disposed in a smaller area so that that area is not uh, you know uh, made totally useless now it is a um, terrible sight to see in this in this uh, issue like uh, Indoor has been consistently getting this award and there's a YouTube video where they have shown exactly how they went about it. This is, they uh, made the citizens aware that you have to segregate your waste. Solid, non-solid, degradable, not degradable. And they employed, they have money, so they employed a huge army of people to collect in different, different categories and different bins. So when it goes to that waste management uh, center, the solid ones are compressed with very high pressure machines and they are even used for other construction works. And Indoor has been successfully doing it and I'm very, uh, uh, you know, impressed by their uh, activities. It seems it was highly polluted uh, at least 10 years back and this has been, uh, uh, you know, they're not a very new uh, achievement. Now, uh, next, uh, next slide. So sustainable lamka depends on all of us. I think one slide has been missed. Uh, there are some examples of unsustainable city. Can you see that? So anyway, it's okay. So uh, like I said, Indoor is one example of a sustainable city in India. We can study it for future reference. And Singapore is an international example of a sustainable city where people have, are really interested. And 50% of its area is filled with trees and vegetations. And Singapore, uh, it is a sustainable city and people are aware, definitely. But one point here is the governance is very strong. People, uh, the, the administrators or whoever is the president or prime minister, they are totally uh, corruption-less, corruption-free. And they do what they say. So the people cannot refuse. And the governance is very strong. They provide very good housing for every citizen. And people pay their taxes well and people are very uh, low abiding and and whatever initiative regarding sustainability is introduced by the government is uh, fulfilled in a very good way so that's one good example and least sustainable cities in the country i would say mumbai and delhi are uh, there delhi schools had to be closed down in november because of the heavy pollution even the government of Delhi said the uh, school should not open, though the schools were ready to open. So that's a very sad story. And one example of unsustainable city international is Hong Kong, where they say because of very tall skyscrapers and underground concrete structures, maybe metro stations or many other uh, parking or whatever, the trees cannot take root. So it's, the air is very polluted, only because they are a very rich country. They do all they can to make it comfortable, but it's one of the least sustainable cities. And that is one uh, pointer for us not to make very, very, you know, big concrete and very tall skyscrapers in our cities. Yeah. And so I'd like to say that trees are central. To, uh, as a forest officer, I would like to say that whenever we speak of sustainable cities, trees are the central point. Every city planner, which I have read about, I have read some papers about this topic, they have focused first on the trees. Uh, I read that in, um, uh, uh, in uh, Copenhagen, they have made it a point that uh, the, the, the settlements are sandwiched between parks. So within two minutes, you can reach, any, uh, any citizen can reach a forest city forest or a park within two minutes. So this leads to better physical health, better mental health also. Stress level is also gone. So that is the kind of cities we want to live in. Uh, Denmark, we can also try for that. Okay, so next, uh, last second. So all these endeavors I am just passing on. 
I also have not, I cannot say that I have actually practiced this. It is all, uh, you know, conjectures and our wishes and our vision. And so I hope that God will bless us all. And finally, one day we'll all be living in a very uh, advanced and sustainable city with, uh, which is admired by all and visited by people from all over the world. Thank you.